welcome back to another video. I am Alexia Nicole, and today we're talking about steps to home ownership. Let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So some of you all may know, I am a licensed real estate agent in Texas. In particular, I service the city of Houston and all of its surrounding suburbs. Um, but this video can go for anyone wanting to purchase any home within the United States and probably internationally as well. These steps are very general when it comes to purchasing a home, whether it be your first home, second, third, fourth, tenth home, whatever it is, you want to follow these steps. Step number one, you need proof of funds. The money, right? Like we can't talk real estate, we can't talk about buying anything unless you show me what you're working with. So, a few options that you have with proof of funds, either one, you're going to have cash money in the bank, right? So, if you approach a real estate agent and you know, you already have your cash, you wanna be able to show them proof of those funds. Basically, a bank statement showing, um, I have this much cash in my bank account, or if you're going to be taken from your 401k, or whatever it is, you need to show them that proof of funds or secondly you need to get pre-qualified for a mortgage loan and some real estate agents will probably tell you come to me first and then I'll get you pre-qualified obviously you know I would rather my clients come to me already pre-qualified that is one step already done and out of the way you're ready to go we know what price range you're working with whatever that you may to come to your real estate agent with a proof of funds from whatever bank it is that you choose whether that is a private mortgage lender or a wells fargo chase bank of america whoever it may be if you take that one step before you approach a real estate agent things will go by so much quicker so yes once you get your proof of funds and you either have how much cash you're willing to work with or the bank tells you how much they're willing to loan you for um, a mortgage, then we're ready to rock. The second step is selecting a real estate agent. And like I was saying, these two steps are interchangeable. You can select your real estate agent first or you can do your proof of funds first, whatever it may be. You do go with selecting a real estate agent first. Real estate agents work very closely with mortgage lenders and they can always refer you a few mortgage lenders to connect with and see you know, if they can make your home buying dreams come true. But anyway, so once we get our money and our realtor lined up, we are ready to go through the home buying process, right? Yay! We are ready to start shopping for a home. Now, I have clients that come to me and say, oh, Alexa, you know, I'm moving to Houston. Houston is booming with growth right now and people are just wanting to come into the city and they don't really know much about the city. So I, as a realtor, can kind of, you know, navigate them to certain areas of the city and, you know, what you may find over here and what you may find over here and cost of homes in different areas and things of that sort. But you always want to be prepared and have kind of notes in your mind of what it is that you want out of the area that you're living in. Good schooling, commutable to work, church, whatever it is that you know you may do. If you're the type of person that likes to enjoy nightlife, you might want to live a little closer downtown or midtown or whatever it may be. So have all those things jotted down for your realtor. So when they do start the initial um, criteria search for homes that you're looking for, it helps narrow down that search so you're not looking in 10 different areas of the city that you choose, right? So, once your realtor does this search for you, and feel free to do this search on your own too. I'm sure your realtor wouldn't be mad if you helped them with the searching of a particular home. You know, honestly, a lot of people find their homes by themselves. <laughs> a lot of times, just driving around on the weekends, looking at different homes, popping by open houses and telling their realtor, oh my gosh, I found this home, can you contact the listing agent and you know, let's try to move forward with that. That happens a lot too. But so yes, so you're going to start searching for a home. You know, most people like to get out on the weekends and do some showings, look here, look there. But once you've narrowed down a few houses that you want to go see, and by a few, I definitely mean a few, 
you know, I think some people get it confused and real estate agents are not taxis. As much as we enjoy helping you achieve your home ownership goals, I don't want to drive around and look at 10 houses on a Saturday. <laughs> you know, honestly, I don't. So not that we can't look at 10 houses ever. So the thing for you to do is really narrow down what it is that you want in a home. Once the realtor sends you a list of homes, really narrow down what it is that you're looking for in a home. Now I know pictures can be deceiving sometimes and you really just kind of want to go see it for yourself. But you know what else you can do when you're um, in the phase of shopping for a home? Even if you're not with the realtor, you can drive through the neighborhood, kind of see if it's somewhere that you think you might even want to live. Um, you can do that on your own time. What I suggest is narrowing down to like four or five homes per um, showing session with your realtor. Um, because once you start looking, once to me, once you've looked at more than four, maybe five homes, they all start jumbling together in your brain and you can't remember whose bedroom was upstairs and who had the washing machine outside. Like all of that gets lost. Of course, you're gonna write down notes and all of that, but I think four to five homes in a showing session is definitely max for me. Unless you're flying in out of town and you only have like two days and we really gotta see, you know, all these houses that are at the top of your list. Now, there's certain things like that that you can make exceptions for. But, you know, just be considerate of your time and your realtor's time as well. So, okay, I guess this this video is going into a little more depth than just, <laughs> than just the steps to home ownership. But, I mean, these are just things that you should consider in general when doing the whole home purchase thing. Um, okay, so, great. We've looked at homes. We've, we have found one that we are in love with. Your heart is beating over. You can't stop telling your mother-in-law how beautiful it is and your husband is happy with it too or whatever it may be, right? And we decide to put an offer in on the home. This is where the fun part begins, right? So, and you wanna move quickly on this process, especially if you're in a market like Houston, median average sale price of a home is somewhere between, I think, 230 and 250. These homes don't last on the market very long, right? And then if you even go lower than that, which you can in Houston, you can easily get a three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage house in Houston for $150,000. If you're in a price range like that, let me tell you, you can't even close your eyes and think about that, okay? Because somebody's gonna beat you to the gun. So be ready to make an offer once you fall in love. You wanna be like, okay, realtor Alexia, I like this house, let's make an offer, let's go back to your office, sit down and get the paperwork done. So when it comes time to making an offer, you need to have two things prepared in preparation. So money this is where money comes in hand so you know what even before that proof of funds happens you need to have savings you need to have cash in the bank because you have to have cash during the real estate process so one once you submit your offer you decide okay this they're asking one hundred sixty thousand dollars on this house i'm gonna offer 155. the realtor writes up the offer and along with that offer they need to send copies of two checks one year option fee which gives you well, an option fee is going to give you a certain amount of days with a certain price per day to have the option to consider this home right so that means during that time you're going to get your inspection done uh, pretty much anything that you want checked out on the home you are paying for that time period so that really means that the owner of the home is taking the home off the market for this time or is saying that it's currently under contract at this time and you have you know, most people do a 10 day option fee, $10 per day, $100. So you write a $100 check, realtor sends that, a copy of that check with the, the contract. And then you also need to have earnest money prepared. Earnest money is just letting the person know that you were serious about the purchase of this home. So if I'm, so I'm gonna write them a, 
$1,500 check or whatever, 1% 1 of whatever the price is that I said. You're gonna write that check as well, showing them that you are a stand-up person, you mean what you say, you're really interested in purchasing this home. Here's this money, hold on to this $1,500 while we get to the closing table. You know, usually average closing time, 30 days. You know, one month from contract to close. Keys in your hand. So those are two things that you need to have prepared before you really even start the um, the process of shopping for homes. You need to make sure that you have cash. So the realtor sends off your contract, your copy of your option fee, copy of your earnest money. Your realtor is representing you as a buyer. They are going to do all the communication with the listing agent. You should not be talking to the listing agent or the owner of the home. That is what your realtor is for, to represent you on all levels when it comes to the purchase of buying this home. So you do your negotiations, you all agree on everything, it's written down in the contract, you both sign the contract, boom, you have an executed contract. That's great. So now contract is executed. Now this is when the lender, the mortgage lender, the person that originally gave you your proof of funds, unless it's cash, and if you got that kind of cash, kudos to you. This is when your lender takes on their role, them and their underwriter. This is when people start sweating and because the lender is asking you for so much information people get nervous and want to back out and all kind of stuff but chill it's okay we're gonna get the deal done especially if you work with a really good lender they're gonna get it done for you right so this is where during this time period after the contract has been executed the mortgage lender and the underwriter are doing their thing what are you doing you're not running any credit you're not out buying new cars you're not out um charging up your cards you are just playing it real safe you buy groceries you go to work you just live real basic basically you don't want to do anything that is going to pop up on your credit because your mortgage lender already has everything as what you showed it to be when you got your original proof of funds so please do not go and mess that up. You have people do that all the time that they're just so excited that they're getting the house and two days before closing, they decide to go out and buy a new car. Ding, ding, ding. Once the mortgage lender has to run your credit again because they run it a few times during the process, boom, you done went out and bought a new car. Now they've just changed your whole DTI, debt to income. Now you don't qualify for this house anymore because I can't lend you this amount of money anymore. These are the type of things that happen to a lot of people that are first time home buyers and they don't realize that they can't do these things. That's why I'm doing this video for you. So don't do that, right? So we're just gonna play it cool, play it safe, you know, not transfer monies from bank account to bank account to bank account. We always wanna see that you have your closing costs, down payment costs in this one bank account. So when it does come time to get to that closing table and sign the documents, all your cash is there. Nobody has to worry about anything like that. Once the contract is executed and the lender and the underwriter are doing their thing, there's a few things that are happening. You're getting your appraisal done. Um, oh my gosh, y'all, I forgot to talk about the type of loans. I should have talked about this earlier. Let's just pause. Let's throw that in right now, right? So there are a few different type of loans, but in general, the most popular type of loans are going to be the FHA loan, which is going to be um, a government loan, or really it's a private sector loan, but it is um, insured by the government. Um, and then you have conventional loans, which is just a private sector loan. We're just going to stick with those two loans right now. I'll do another video one day that goes in details of kind of all the different loans that you can get and the differences between those. But let's just focus on these two for today. So FHA and conventional. Normally with the FHA loan, you're paying anywhere between three to 5% down payment for your home. And then you have um, a higher interest rate and you also have to pay um, mortgage insurance on that loan. So that's more than likely going to make your mortgage not necessarily higher than you want because you're always gonna 
just stick within your price range, but it tacks on an extra fee. So a conventional loan is normally a loan where you pay a little bit of a higher down payment, anywhere between five to 10%, but you don't have to pay um, mortgage insurance on that loan. So this is where you know, you're talking to your lender and she's running numbers or he is running numbers for you. Um, so basically with the FHA loan, it tax on additional fee. Um, and with the conventional loan, it doesn't. So that all kind of um, changes the price of the home that you can purchase as well, right? So just wanted to throw that note in there about the two main loans that you usually hear about when um, purchasing a home. Also during the time that the lender and underwriter are doing their thing, when you did your home inspection, which you would have done during your option period, if anything came back that you were a little wary about, um, you and the seller would have came to an agreement and on the executed contract, it would have said what they were going to replace and fix and that they're responsible for and what you're responsible for. So during that period of time, all of those things should be getting fixed as well, right? Um, what else are we doing while we are waiting for the lender and underwriter to finish their job? Um, you wanna be shopping home insurance. You know, like this is the biggest purchase the average person makes, right? And, I, and look, none of us are average. We are all exceptional in our own way, but average as in um, <laughs> average as in monetary funds, most people don't purchase anything in a larger amount than a home, unless you're just one of the rich and famous. Now they do different things. But in average, a home purchase is usually the biggest purchase most people make. So you definitely want to make sure that that home is insured and you want to shop home insurances just like you would car insurance. It's the same exact thing. You're going to insure your home um, and then just depending on where you live, like if you live here in Houston, Texas, um, you might want to get flood insurance, which that is expensive, but as y'all know, we like to flood and wash away and then you know if your home isn't insured then you're just out of luck uh, make sure you know that it covers fires and you know just all kind of things of that sort so these are just things that you should be thinking of during the home buying process as well so yes so we are getting close to our set closing date the mortgage lender gives the realtor a call gives you a call and says great we got the clear close meaning that the underwriter has done their job everything looks good the funds are good the home appraised right and you don't have to go and fight for a different price and back out of the contract whatever things come up that do come up often you know but for this example we're just having a perfect transaction like this is just gonna be easy peasy um we get the clear to close yay every time i hear that word it is just so exciting clear to close yes that means you're gonna get your keys and i'm gonna collect my check hallelujah um so yeah we get to the closing table you do your part and i think a lot of people i hear it i hear it often a lot of people feel like you're sitting across from the seller and y'all are in there together that's not generally how it works usually the seller comes at one time they sign their paperwork you come at one time you sign your paperwork you take the picture with the key or in front of the house or whatever it may be that your realtor likes to do um, and you get your keys to your home and now you are a home owner so I try to keep this video short and sweet. I know I can get long one and get to talking sometimes, but those are the basic steps to home ownership. So let's run through them kind of quick, real basic, right? So proof of funds, um, select your realtor, shop for homes, pick a home, don't mess up your credit during the process. <laughs> um, Pay for your inspection, pay for your appraisal, um, shop for home insurance, clear the clothes, and grab your keys. Yay! We're all done. So comment down below if you have any questions or anything else that you kind of want me to talk about, go in more detail about. 
I didn't talk about credits in this video because that is a whole nother video for a whole nother day. Maybe I will do one. Maybe I will get a lender or somebody that has a lot more background in um, fixing credit and what you can do with your credits. Uh, but just to throw out uh, just one little keynote, you have a credit score between like a 580 and 620, but you have a lot of cash on hand, meaning you can put down a hefty down payment for a home. It's quite possible that you can buy a house. So please, you know, I just like to tell people, don't let your credit discourage you from making this step. It is a big step, but it's not an impossible step. You know, home ownership is not for everyone, just depending on your lifestyle, but it is for most people. Um, if you do have any questions, anything that you want me to elaborate on, please um, comment down below. Um, go to my social media, my Instagram at alexinicole.life. Um, leave me a DM. I would be happy, happy, happy to share whatever knowledge it is that I have with you to get you to that um, step of home ownership. Okay? Um, but yeah, guys, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and ding the bell as well if, you know, you are new to the channel um, and want to know when I'm posting videos. Okay? But until next time, see you later.